Hello and today I'm going to be taking us through the enzyme mechanical estimating that is currently on version 62.4.16 and what I'd like to just take us into before we start creating a job is our support section up here. So if I go and give this a press this will give you all of our contact details and it also gives you a couple of new ways of getting in contact with us such as being able to submit a ticket or being able to talk to us through our online chat down here. And in our help resources, we've created a couple of new articles to help you with your day-to-day runnings on, on the estimating software in any way that we can. And this is something that we are going to be constantly updating in the future on this articles tab if you wanted to see that in a bit more detail. And of course, if there is anything that we can always do to add into the software or, or any particular articles that you'd like to see, uh, please make sure to pop that through as a suggestion to us here. So another thing that I'd like to quickly just take us into um, before we start to create the job is this tool section up here. So I'm going to click into here. This is all the back end settings of the software. So this is something that we actually go through and set up for you uh, beforehand. So what we can do, um, I can show you a bit of an example, is a discount structure that we go in and fill in. So what we're looking at in here is a database built up. Um, using the lights of uh, Wolseley, Pipe Center, BSS, that those sort of things. And we've got the discount terms and we have them inputted in against the different discount groups of each of the suppliers. So in that way, we can actually set it up directly to how you need it to be, rather than you having to sit there and spend time and filling out this information yourself. Um, so I just thought I'd quickly show you that. So there is lots of other things that we can do within the tools section, but we can cover, we can cover that in another session. The last thing up here of interest would be this cloud documents button. Uh, so what this is for, uh, I'm using our new web-based version of the software, and this is for any uh, drawings or documents that I'd like to either upload or download, um, either onto or from the software, basically. So just give this a press and this gives you your little uh, web storage of where or anything Enzyme uh, created or, or you want to save can all be stored basically. Okay. Um, one other thing is the price updates. So the price updates, I'm currently up um, uh, at the time of recording, I'm currently on our most up-to-date prices, which is this one down here, number 181. And this will be sent out to you uh, once a month for you to run through, and this will update all of the trade prices in the software, keeping you up to date and then applying those discounts that we've just been and looked at. So now what we can do is we can jump straight into the job. So what I'm going to do here is press create job. This will allow us to start filling in our new job information. Now, on this job code, I've actually had mine pre-filled. Uh, this can be blank and be filled in each time um, individually, if you prefer. Or you can actually have it so the next quotation, it will just go up in chronological order for you. As you can see, you have got the ability of just over typing this still. Uh, you are not fixed to this job code. But um, if you are going to be putting everything through it, sometimes it can be ideal just to have it um, fill up for you. Then what we've got below that is pretty simple. You've got your job name, um, so I can put in our just what we're doing today. I'll just put in a tender example, and that's going to be what we're going to go with. And below that, you have your client name. So what you can do is you can actually start to build up um, through every quotation your client list. So whenever you add a new client on, they will forever be stored in here, so you can use them again uh, the next time you need to do another quotation for them. So I'm just going to pick Enzyme. Now, what we've got up here is this parent code box. Now, this is a bit more of an internal grouping code. So this isn't something that's actually going to be shown on the final printout on, of the tender summary or a bill of quantities, for example. This is just used internally, so you guys can store your jobs however you prefer to do them. A couple of examples has been users, uh, client names, uh, the same job with lots of revisions in, so you can use that to just keep everything stored together. But you, you are not required to use this box, it's just there if you need it. That's the same thing with the tender submission date. It's not required for you to use it, uh, but it just adds a nice little... Step ...depending on the tender, when the tender needs to be submitted by, sorry. So 
for example, most people go with the traffic light system of green, you're fine, amber, you're getting close, and red, the job needs to be submitted. Once again, this is a feature that will uh, that can only be seen by you and be viewed on the amend job page, but it can be very helpful. So then what we get to down here then is the labor aspect of the job. So if I just come straight down here to the site labor rate type, I have a standard rate of 20 pounds set up. If I wanted to, I could always come in here, add new slash amend, and I could add any additional rates I'd like to add in, such as um, out of hours or, or anything like that, or out of town rates, depending on how you do it. And then you just fill in your labor rate column here. Now, if you have a bit more of a labor rate that just needs to be for this specific job, and you don't necessarily want to add it onto your database as an option, then you can just go for this special labor rate button here. And then that will allow you to just type into this box to put in whatever your required rate needs to be fit for this job. So I'm gonna put in 25 pounds, for example. There we go. Now, what we've got up here at the top is um, some additional costings that we can add on to the total cost of the labor. Um, usually this is associated with sort of travel costs. So travel distance would be a cost per mile that we can set up on the software. Or much simpler, you have daily additional costs where you could allow X amount per day. Now that could be for, uh, for the cost of fuel, uh, parking, congestion charges, anything to do with those sorts of things. Feel free to input them in here. Now, what we've got down here is a few more little settings. So you have supply only and install only. So meaning you are only supplying the materials or you are only installing the materials. If you are doing a standard supply and fit job, um, then you just leave both of these tick boxes blank as, as they are. You only tick one if you necessarily need it. Now, what we've tried to do to try to keep the screen as neat and tidy as possible is we have stored away a few advanced options down here where you have a couple of different um, little things that you can change for, for the job. Most of these can be come, you can come back and amend once you've created the job, but there's a couple of things that are a, a bit more fixed, such as uh, the input type, for example. And uh, this is actually how you, how you can copy a job as well. Uh, you have to click this button and then select the job you'd like to copy and it will copy you in the same exact quotation uh, but with all of this tender information instead of what was on the original job header. But um, like I said, they're not the usual things that you're going to have to go into. So we'll fold that back up and what we'll do is we'll press the continue button down here that, that will actually create the job for us. Okay, so now we have created our job and that has taken us to the second stage, which is the takeoff page down here that you can see. Now, what we're looking at in here is three different main areas. You've got all your takeoff items, uh, which you'd select over here on the left hand side. You have your sectional structure here in the middle that we can create. And here on the right is the go to examine grid that will show you all of the individual items that you put inside each section. So the first thing that we're probably going to want to look at is the sectional structure here. So what we can create with this is a tender breakdown effectively, but whether this is going to be your own or whether this is going to be something you're going to have to follow. Um, now it's very similar to Windows File Explorer. So we just tried to keep the same logic as that has of having files inside of folders. So if I make us a brief example of say ground floor, and then within ground floor, I may have two subservices which we're going to use. So I'll come down to the letter B and press plus, and you'll see that that adds a B level section into the ground floor. Let's see, I can open it and close it away. So we'll recall this, I'll call this service A. And then I'm going to add in another service, I'll just call this one service B. And there we are. Now I have my section structure. Now I could add in as many of these B levels that I'd like. And if I actually needed to, I could break it down into further subsection levels of level C and D. Uh, but for, for, for the sake of what we're doing, I'll just keep it as A and B. Now, say you have this that needs to be created up for a couple of floors. You could go uh, the A plus route and create first floor B plus with the services. And you just repeat the same process of what we've just done. Or you could sort of try and speed up the process by simply right-clicking on the folder 
and pressing the duplicate button. As you can see, that will create me an identical copy. And all I will actually have to do is rename this copied section bit here to first floor. Like that. Now, one thing you can do to stop this from folding up all the time is simply just right click on any of this blank white space of the section structure here and you've got keep globally expanded. This will stop them from constantly folding up when you're either duplicating folders or creating new ones. Right, so once we've got the section structure all sorted out, what we're going to want to do is then come over on here to the left hand side. Now we've got two methods of what we're going to be going through. Um, we're going to go through the, the manual process of adding on any items that you'd like and then I can also show us the process of bringing in the mechanical PDF takeoff with some already um, pre-done items on it and we're just going to read that straight in. So I'll bring us around to that in a moment. So the main way that you'd probably want to look through our different list of uh, material items is looking into our specification list. So if I click on this little drop down list it brings up all of our different specs. And whenever you click on one, you'll see here that the images change. So we try to always match, um, always try to match the spec up to the pictures as much as possible, just a freezy association. And um, that isn't the only way you can look through specs. You can click on this little button up here at the, at the side of it. Uh, the good thing about this method is it actually allows you to go through and set up any favourites that you'd like. So, for example, if I just take Yorkshire Potable Solder Ring and I mark that as one of my favorites. In this list I can actually refine it to only show me the favorites but one of the main things about it is now if I press confirm on the drop down list that's uh, solder, uh, the potable solder rather, is now at the top of my list under this little line so all your favorites will automatically be moved up to the top of the list for you just to make it easier rather than having to go uh, get a spec from the bottom and then all the way back up to the top again. Just makes your life a bit easier. So now if we actually want to look into inputting a couple of items, we can see here I've got my copper tube, so I'm going to give that a press. It comes up, I've got all my different relevant sizes, we've got our set labour times, and I've got my supposed net rates created up from the list price minus my discount that you can see over here. So to actually input them onto the job, it's pretty simple. You come to the quantity box and you simply just input how many metres of the relevant pipe work it is that you need. There we are, something like that, and hit the confirm button, and you'll see that has now been added to ground floor service A, and you can see all your takeoff lines over here on the right. Now, one really nice feature about it is it will actually remember what sizes we've just used. So when you go click on the bends, it is only going to show you the relevant sizes. If you do, for whatever reason, need the other sizes, they are just stored away in a little display all sizes tick box just down here. You press that, it brings everything else back up fold it all back away again just as easily. Press confirm as you can see it adds it in. Now one thing to note with the specification the pictures are not the only items that you will have available. You have this other items button just down here. Now this means other items in relation to the specification that you're in. So if I give this a press you can now see all of the available manufacturers and from there you can then see what categories of items are available. I can switch it around and just view all of the categories first and then click on the relevant manufacturer to find the items if I wanted to go about it that way. Most of the time I think people do hold it um, to manufacturer first just because it seems a, a bit more suitable. You can go to find all of the Yorkshire fittings and here is all the additional fittings we don't have out there. Once again, same process, go into the ones you want, input your quantities against the relevant sizes. And there we are. So that slowly and slowly starts to build up our quotation more and more. So then what you've got after that is the other items, so the things that don't change. So if you notice, whenever I go into even a different specification, anything from the valve image down to any of the sanitary wear, all the way down to the AC units, these don't change. So these are not affected by the specifications. If you want any of these items, just click on the relevant image, so I need a valve, and then we get put into the same thing as what we just seen on the other items page with a selected manufacturer or we can go select by category first if we preferred. So this time I'm going to do it this way around. I'm going to say I need a check valve. 
and now I have all of the suppliers available um, that, that can supply ch the check valves, sorry. So I'm gonna go for green, and then that brings it over here, and I have all my different spec options here. So I'm gonna go for the 140, and once again, follow the same process. Now, what you might see in here is the fact that I don't actually have any discounts on these items. So what you can do, if you know your discount at this stage, just click on the box and click the change discount button. Now all of these are inside of the same discount band, discount band F. So this is in relation to the discount page that we looked at at the start of the video. So you can see all of these are in discount band F. What that means is if I input one discount, it's gonna apply itself to all of these items and probably plus a few more that's in the crane valve discount band. So I'm just gonna put in minus 40%. Now, it is very important that you remember to put on your minus symbol, as it states down here, otherwise the system will view that as a positive increase rather than a negative decrease. So once you're happy with what you've got, press the confirm button, and it will ask you, do you want to store this just for the job, or would you like to make this a permanent change? Um, this time, I'm just gonna go for the job, and press confirm, and there we are, it's filled that out for me, and I hit confirm again, and it will input my quantities on the screen. Now, that is gonna be the same scenario for nearly all of these items down here. So if I need a particular radiator, for example, I can follow the same thing. This time I'm gonna go by for Stellrad. Then I'm gonna go for the, hmm, so many choices. Uh, standard K2, go in, confirm, and here we are once again with all of our sizes and no discount. What I'm gonna do though, I'm gonna say it's, I don't know what this discount is currently uh, for my um, for my Stellrad items. So I'm just gonna input my relevant sizes, what I need at the minute. And we're gonna come back and fill out these discounts later on at stage three. So that's unpriced items down here. So we'll come back to this a little bit later on. So now moving down the list of what else it is that you have available to you guys. I'm just gonna switch back to my solder range. Another thing that you might see flickering all the time is the linear and unit assemblies for when you change specification. So usually there is both of them available as you can tell through quite a couple of them, but there is the odd few where you only have one of the linear, linear or unit available. Now what these are, these are pre-made assemblies, so you might know them as kits or composites. They're pre-made ones that we have created for you. So if I give you an example on the linear runs, I can go in here and you can see you have a copper pipe on hanger or you've got it on brackets and you've actually got it on hanger but it's flanged as well. So there's quite a few different options in here. So I'm just gonna quickly show you one by pressing the view assembly. And in here, now you can see that how all of our quantities are set and what actual items this is gonna allow for you. So you've got um, one meter of tube for every meter that you measure. And then what it does from there is then work out how to do all of the um, all of the hangers for you. And it actually allows for the additional couplings that you need as well. Now these actually have one more additional benefit, which it doesn't necessarily show you here. When you use this on our mechanical PDF takeoff, it will actually automatically put in any horizontal 90 or 45 bends for you as well. So it does have that little extra feature. Now to use them, they work exactly the same as a normal item. There is no real difference when it comes around to it. Once again, you just input your relevant meterage, hit press confirm, and that will move it across. But you can see these actually show up in a red color and it's actually got a couple of issues. That's why it's highlighting these in the yellow color that we've seen previously with our discounts. So once again, we don't have to worry about any of this because it's gonna highlight it all on stage three, like I've just said on the unpriced items. So that is an example of a linear assembly. We've also got unit assembly, so these could be uh, brilliant for our radiator valve sets or washer connections or any other relevant ones that, that you can necessarily think of for yourself as well. So the unit ones are a lot more simpler. You just have the preset values to it. So three meters, two elbows, uh, one uh, DZR and one tab connection. So you might actually prefer to have your own version of this with you know with the correct valves in from, from your relevant supplier. 
and that's actually is what's referred to as a manual assembly. That would be this one. Now you actually get to create all your different main index and sub index to store the items, very similar to our manufacturer and then what category there is. But the only thing is you have to work to the same fixed categories that we have over here on the left hand side, which is actually the same level of breakdown as the material items that you get down here, the special material items, sorry. So you can either create your assembly in here and then you can go through and manually find all the items that you'd need through through the advanced search. Or alternatively, if you prefer to sort of make them up as you're going along in the job, you could get all of the relevant items that you need. Say for argument's sake, it is just the tube in this elbow. I could highlight both of these and then simply just right click it and then come down here, press this option of create manual assembly. And say if I did miss an item, I can also easily just add one in. Which uh, some people, they just copy their assemblies and add on the additional things. And you'll be able to find ways within yourself of, of what is your preferred method of actually creating up these assemblies for yourself. Okay. Now, for any of the items which you can either not find on the system or, or if it is something that we don't have, of course, you know, always come to us and request that you'd like these items added in. But if you need a way of inputting them now for the quotation that you're in, that would be this free type button down here that you'd want to press. So just press free type. Once again, it's going to give you the same fixed categories that we just seen in our manual assemblies button. So just assign the material to, to whatever category it falls under most. Um, if it's something just a bit of tube or anything that you want to allow for, then go for this miscellaneous option here. But um, if, for example, it was a certain valve or a radiator or a pump that you need, just click on the relevant one, press confirm, and now you can just input the exact description that you'd like this to be. You can include any sizes if that is actually going to be relevant and how many you need plus the labor hours and the cost each. So I'll just put this in as example valve. Um, it's just a fixed valve size, so, so there is no relevant sizes. I need two of them. I'm gonna say they take half an hour to install, so I'm gonna put 0 0.5, and then I'm gonna say that these are 35 pound 63 each. Now, if I had another one I needed to add in, I can just come down to the next line, and now I can fill that out again. If not and you're happy, then just press the confirm button. Now this will just add it onto the software and as you can see it shows up as a slight different colour. So you can tell that that is a manual entry or a free type that you've inputted in at a quick glance. Okay. Another button that's very similar to free type is labour only. It is actually an option within the free type menu itself. It makes no difference if you press this labour only button or if you press the direct option just there works very much the same. You input your description, size, quantity, and you can just see here at the end, the cost button isn't there, but the hours is. So this would be a um, perfect example for removal. Uh, there's one lot of it, and I think it's gonna take three hours. Confirm, and I can input it like that. Once again, you can see it shows up as a different color, and actually shows the orange, which is around the labor only button. Now, one last thing that you might want to add on would be the subcon specials. So this would be for any subcontract packages or specialist materials that you need to sort of bring onto the software that you'd where you'd like the cost to be kept separate from the rest of the materials that we've added in. Now this works brilliantly if, for example, if you um, don't necessarily install ductwork yourself and you need to subcontract it out. This is a perfect example of gas insulation, fire alarm, electrical works, whatever need whatever work it is that needs to be carried out. If it's not in this list, just press add new and you can add it on here at the bottom and it will be there for next time for you to use as well. Okay, so what I'm actually gonna do then is I'm gonna add in a ductwork quotation. So I'm going to actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make another A level section just for my ductwork. Ah, and if you spell it wrong, let's give it a couple of clicks and there we go, we can come back on here and we can rename it. Now, say say just before I put this ductwork subcontractor in, I need this section to be up here at the very top of the job. It's not a problem. All I have to do is grab it, and as you can see, you can reorder everything. I can put it exactly where I need it to be. So I'm going to have it up here at the very, very top. 
So I'm going to go sub column and specials. I'm going to get the dot work. I'm going to press confirm. And it looks very similar to the free type. Like I said, it's going to store this material cost for us and keep it separate. So if I put dot work quote, size isn't relevant. There's one lot of. It requires three hours of supervision. And the cost of it is £7,000. There we go. And that's added that onto here for us and this will be kept as a so this seven thousand pound is going to be kept separately from the rest of our materials later on and this is then going to allow us to be able to um to mark this up um a little bit less if we wanted to from everything else or or you know at all if it needs to be okay coming down here at the bottom then you've just got a nice simple comment line so this will literally show up on the screen for you and it will actually appear on your bill of quantities if you left the item in there so if this is something you do want to use um, make sure that you just make sure that you pop these in basically if not then you can sometimes just use them for your own reference and then simply just remove them after you've um, after you've sorted everything out that needs to be done and just in case you ever need to bring that information back or or any other items that you've deleted within a section there is a restore deleted lines button here that you can always bring it back and you can always see these items that you've removed now that will be that will still be there in a year's time as long as the job is so these aren't something that's going to be removed as soon as you remove any as soon as you delete anything else in the job this will always be here for each and individual section Okay, now earlier I did mention the advanced search button, which is just down here, and basically just to sum this up, this is every manufacturer that we have on our software, and we're giving you different ways of viewing all the different materials that are supplied from them. So rather than being organized into different specifications, such as Yorkshire, where, there's, where there is quite a few, um, you can then go into the database, find what you would, sorry, come into the database and find the relevant supply that you're looking for such Pegler Yorkshire fittings and here we are here's everything that is offered from them Just again go through and then find the relevant items and then input the relevant sizes against the quantities that's one method of the advanced search there is the description and code searcher which is actually what this little search box up here in the top right is there for so if you do know any of the product codes or you wanted to search an item via its description then please do so this one will allow you to do uh, both of the searches where in here you need to go onto the respected box so some people do prefer that to find a few of the items on the database but you once again you will find your best way of moving around now what I'm going to quickly do for us is import from the PDF takeoff so I've actually already got my items already there and ready I've completed my drawing so now my section structure is there and I've got all my other items in I'm just going to press import PDF and it's actually taken me all the it's actually defaulted already to my drawings folder on the cloud so this is actually the file which I'm going to need so I'm just going to open this up which is then going to show me my two relevant services that I've got here so now what I'm going to do is go and read CWS into service B so I'm just going to highlight both of them and then press import and there we are the items have just moved behind there I'll show you that in a minute and the service A, I'm going to import the hot water service there. Now what that's done is actually just read in a good amount of lines for us and just input them all the way down the board. There we are, so it's very quick at inputting those quantities over. Now, we could copy and paste any of these items nice and easy onto any other sections if you have got the same thing on multiple floors or there is ways that we could just read that same file into the job again it honestly it's whichever you would personally prefer to do okay so once I'm starting to build up my sections and as you can see I'm starting to get quite a few bits populated on my screen once I've finished a section I can simply just come on here and I can mark it as green as complete so I could go through and every section where I'm happy I could mark it off 
Now, this will not actually affect anything else in the software. This is more so just a visual reference for you. However, it is very helpful, just especially if there is a couple of people that are working on the same project or, or reviewing it or anything, and they can see exactly where you are with the job as well. So once I'm happy and I've marked everything up as green, which I am, I'm now going to continue forward to the next stage, the unprized items. So I'm going to go forward, and this is everything that the warning triangle was popping up, or, or the yellow lines on the examin grid. Now in here it is highlighting what all of the issues are for me. So down here I can see I don't have my discounts on my um, on my Stellrad, and I also don't have it on my threaded rod. And I can see a bunch of other items don't have any of the labour times set against them. Now, looking at the items that don't have labour, I'm going to assume that labour is, is in the pipework itself, uh, rather than on the additional fittings. But if I did want to allow anything, I only have to come onto the screen and then make any of these adjustments here. Let's quickly go through and fill them out. Okay, then I get to my discounts. Now you have to, you can't type directly into these boxes. You do have to click on the relevant box you want and press the change discount at the bottom. I'm going to write my discount band against 7A. Put minus 55. And save that to my job. There we go. Now I'm going to come down to my Stellbrad radiators. Now if this was something I did need to send off to the wholesaler to get a quotation, I can unfilter my list down here. So then I'm only left with the discount options. And then I can just press the generate report option down here and have this printed off. And you could send that out. But just to fill them in, click on the box, change discount, member, minus, whatever your discount needs to be. Once you're happy with the changes that you've made, simply come down to the bottom and press continue again and that is then going to calculate the job through for you because uh, it's the first time calculating the job and take us directly through to the summary table. Okay, now any time it comes again to calculating the job, so say if you went back to the takeoff screen and you made any adjustments, it is going to ask about recalculating. So I'm just going to quickly take us back and here again and as you can see it's already asking us what are the calculation options that we would like to do. So you have retain material prices where everything that was originally on the job, so everything you can see behind the pop-up, will always stay exactly as they are and only new items will be calculated. Manual update will show you everything on the job that has adjusted and you have the option to either update that price or, or leave it as it is or skip as the software refers to it. And then you have the standard automatic update, which is just going to update everything, make sure that you're using the most current labor rate, trade prices, and discounts. At the minute, it doesn't matter which one we press because nothing will change at this stage. But this is more so if you're having to come back to a job in a month's time and do any revisions on them. Just be careful which option it is that you press because it could drastically change the cost and you would have to um, give us a call to be able to revert those prices for you back to the previous calculation. Okay, so now we're looking at the summary table. Now, the main bit that you'd like to look at, or the starting point, realistically, is this bit up here on the top left. You have your materials, our special items that we added in, radiators, our subcon and specials quote, that's going to be our ductwork quotation, and then the total cost of our site labour. Now, there's two main ways that the markup will be carried out. So that would either be if you follow this all the way down to here, to this on-cost percentage, that would allow us to mark up our materials differently depending on what they are, like that. That gives us a bit of a broader range across the, across the entire job, where you might prefer just to come down to general overhead and profit, which, by the way, is against this total figure. As you can see, this moves down to overhead and profit. And you might just be something as simple as 10% overhead. And then you might fluctuate on your profit between the 10 and, I don't know, 15%. As you can see, the figure adjusts there. So you can always see exactly where you want to work to. If you do prefer to do it up here at the top, 
there is only one thing of detail I must mention. The subcon special you cannot write into this box. It it doesn't allow you to type directly into here. You have to press this little button down here at the side. It takes you into the subcon special's own little mini summary table. You see there for duct work because we could have multiple subcontractors on the job. Uh, so once again, just come to the on cost percentage box and put in what what you would prefer to have, and then just come back up here to the top and switch back over to the summary table. And as you can see. It took my percentages over there as well. I'm going to input my 20% there on my labour, which actually um, corresponds directly to the selling rate figure down here, if this is something you prefer to work with. So £35 an hour would be a 40% increase, and I think the 20 is a 30% 30 pound increase. Sorry. You can also inflate your labour if you wanted to actually total up your days. Um, that's actually gone quite well for me, but um, if I wanted to take that up to 184, there we are, you can see I've ever so slightly inflated my labour time. Now that's the same if you wanted to decrease anything as well, and all of that will just affect your, your costings, thus affecting your markup over here. Now, if builder's discount is something that you need to incorporate into your quotation, so just moving down the options here, and you get to builder's discount, if you need to add on your 2.5% or 139 ninth, you can just add it on there, and as you can see, it adds it onto the quotation for you, and then once, you're, and once you need to remove it again, simply just zero it back out, like that. Okay, which then brings us to the last two stages of the summary table and that is going to be adding on any preliminaries or any prime cost provisional sums or contingencies. So if we come up here to the top and we'll look at the prime cost tab first, you have your prime cost, your provisional sums, your contingencies, and some blank options here if you needed to add anything else on. Whichever one of these it is that you need, simply highlight one, over type it, and input your amount over here, and that will add that on to the quotation for you. So if I call this prime cost, uh, I'm just going to add example in there, example one, and I'm going to allow for £1,000. That has now added that on as a prime cost slash provisional sum down here. That's nice and easy, they will just build up. The prelims are follow the same kind of suit, there's actually three different ways to input them in there. You have the fixed cost, the percentage cost and time related. Now you can actually use all three of them or just one of them, whatever you would prefer to do. And all you would have to do, for example, on the weekly rate is fill out uh, what the rate would be and then number of weeks that is going to be needed on site. There we are. Fixed cost is a lot simpler, that's just lump sums. and the percentage cost, you do have to give it a base value first and then to say how much of a percentage you would like to allow from that base value figure. If you do want to adjust any of these descriptions, simply just click on them and you can overtype them and that will save them just for this job. Any permanent adjustments that you'd like to make, just come up here to this prelim descriptions box up here give that a press and as you can see you can adjust your descriptions permanently in here or just add new ones down here at the bottom. Now the thing is with prelims it will spread the prelims as the tick box is showing you down here and it is spreading it across all of your labour and materials. You do have the ability to set where you would like it spread or if you prefer you can untick it and that will actually set them to show for you. So depending on um, your quotation or, or what client you send it out to it might depend on which which option you want to go for in here. Okay, so now we have our final gross contract cost. If we wanted to, you can press your target value here, and you could round your cost up. You could round it down. It's actually something that's really helpful in negotiating stage. If they're requesting a particular figure that you've got to work to or they, or they prefer you to work to, then you can just input that here and it will automatically adjust the profit figure down there. So if I just um, take this up to three like that, press continue, as you can see it's slightly increased the profit figure 
and added £84 to the quotation just to get it rounded up to my requested figure. Okay, so I've now got it exactly where I need it to be. So what I'm going to do first is just come over here to select reports. These reports will give you any breakdown of the job that you need. If you want to know how the job has actually got to the cost that it is, giving you the complete material breakdown as well as the labour and all of the markup, you can come and find all of that information in here. Just the same as if you would like a material quotation to send over to your wholesaler. You know, uh, that one for example would be the material summary unpriced. But just remember, all of these reports in here are internally for yourself, they are not for your client. The ones for your client, your final printouts, is on the last stage of bills. So to go and view them, all we have to do is press the continue button, and it will move us towards the last stage where we can then generate our summaries, which are here on the left hand side, or we can generate our schedule of rates, and we have a few different options over, the, over on the right for that as well. In the middle, you have some optional documentation, which we could create. You load a draft version into it, and at this stage, you would then go through and adjust what, whichever document it is that you prefer to use. And you change that description, and it will be suitable just for this exact job. So, for example, I'm just going to generate um, a tender summary and a standard schedule of rates. So if you press the preview and export, it will allow you to view this to make sure that you are happy with the information or the layout of it on your screen. As you can see up here at the top, we can add your company logo in there if that is sent over to us. The client's information will go over here on the left. The job information, as you can see on the right, and then as you can see, it slowly starts to break down our job for us. So I've got our ductwork quotation, our ground floor, with a breakdown of service A and service B, as well as a ground floor total. Same thing for the first floor, and then you get your grand total down here at the bottom. That's it for the tender report, but if I press exit, we can then look at the schedule of rates. Oh, my apologies, here is the prime cost breakdown, so prime cost example one. It does say it includes the prelims, but my prelims are set to spread, so they won't be shown here. If we had unticked the box, they would be showing up in this document as well under a nice little prelims column. Now, sorry, we have the schedule of rates, which you can have with or without the sectional breakdown. I've gone with um, to have the sectional breakdown just because it looks a little bit more structured. And here we can see our items, the required size, the quantity, so this is per meter or per item, as well as the supply and fit rate for the same. And then finally, your total cost of each item, and then the subtotal of each relevant section. This one actually spans across a couple of pages, so you have to use your arrows up here on the top right to turn the pages. As we can see, we see all, all of our information on the screen. And once I get to the final tab, we then get our grand total cost. Now, if these reports are something that you wanted, all you have to do is press your little export report down here and that will actually save this ready to be downloaded in our reports folder, as you can see just there. However, if you actually wanted those two documents to be merged together and to be inclusive of one of, our, uh, one of the documentation options here in the middle, then just have the relevant boxes ticked and go instead, go straight for this option here. Export the selected reports to PDF. This will actually allow you to merge those documents and have them all as one as one file rather than two individual PDF documents. So now I just press the export and it's going to do the same thing again and it allows me to rename it and save it. So I'm just going to save it as tender example and that will pop up and tell me when it's done. There we are, done. And now that is there, ready for me to view. And what I could actually do if I wanted to is I could copy that back onto my desktop. I could then um, save that onto my company server or I could email that directly to the client, whatever it is that I need to do. However, though, if you do need some of the other documents, but you don't want them in a PDF document, you know, this is something you'd actually like to edit yourself, then actually just generate them. And then what you should be able to do down here at the bottom where it says PDF, you can then change the file format so you can go for PDF, Word, and you have Excel or the CSV. 
and so then you can actually have it and make any amendments to it or copy the information onto your own sort of quotation document whatever it is that you would prefer to do and once again you can just follow the same thing select the option you want you press export report is then going to be available in the cloud documents reports which you can just copy and paste back to your desktop okay and then to actually say that you finished it and to come out of it and and save it then all we have to do press exit shut down all of the reports and then exit the job and that will actually save everything for you and that will all be completed now just one little note to remember if this is actually something if, if at any stage sorry you are unsure or you don't know how to continue with it and you'd like some assistance the support button is on top of every page so give it a press it takes you straight the way to our help center you've got all of our contact information if it is something you would prefer to speak to us directly about then we are here for you please make sure that you do use the support feature as much as possible we much prefer to help you guys out rather than you sit there struggling